We welcome you in to North Gwinnett High School for the finale of the Jarrett Cook Tip-Off Classic. Joel Hillsman, Brandon Clay, glad that you are with us. It is Gainesville, it is St. Francis, and late breaking news, fresh off the SUVTV.com news wire, Colby Simmons, the star for the St. Francis Knights, will not play tonight due to an ankle injury. Demarcus Simons, he will play, and he is in the starting lineup for the Gainesville Red Elephants. They will be in red, St. Francis will be in white, and we are getting ready to jump this thing up. It'll be K.J. Buffin, Harry Oliver, Michael White, Demarcus Simons, and Bailey Miner, the starters for the Gainesville Red Elephants. And then the starters kick it out. There is a long three. Good. Bang, bang, bang. All three of them for Michael White. For St. Francis, Anthony Scholl, Avery Scholl, Will Richter, and Chance Anderson. And also big Noah Christie for St. Francis is out due to an illness. Did not even make the trip. Put it on the floor, spin underneath, and we will have a traveling violation called on Chance Anderson. Yeah, I have the hard job. <laughs> Brandon Clay joins me. And I broke the news as, the way I could break it. <laughs> That's how it is. Rebound now, going to come down to Bailey Minor. I've been trying to get them two boys on the same court for how long? That's all I'm going to say. That's it. That's my only comment right there. The drive and the score is good. Hey, it's a good move. When this becomes an opportunity now, from a St. Francis Double. perspective, whether it's Anderson, Double. whether it's Shoal, you know, some other guys have a chance to step up. You know, it becomes a really big night for them. And, you know, obviously Gainesville is going to come in this thing locked and loaded. Hey, Benji hey. Wood ready to hey, do his hey, thing. Hey. And DeMarcus Simons, you know, still a, a big night for, for him. It'll be interesting to see. I think from a dynamic standpoint as a player, you're a little let down. You know, you wanted this matchup, right? Can he rebound and have a great night? Or does this become something where he struggles a little bit with that letdown? So a lot of different dynamics in play with Simmons not being out. All that's still involved, the game being played in front of us. So let's get it. Yeah, you're going to get it. And if you're Gainesville, you're all going up against a defending state champ. You always want to be a state champ. Demarcus Simons with the jumper. It is off the bar. Played in the state championship as a sophomore when he was with the Buford Wolves and went up against Tukey Brown. And Tukey Brown gave him the business in that ball game. That young fellow Tukey Brown's a problem, man. Long three is no good off the hill of the rim by Will Richter. So we're in a 4-3 contest. With St. Francis in the lead. Walking it into the full court now is Harry Oliver for the Red Ellers. Over to Demarcus Simons, a three is good. Uh. He's so Simons free. immediately shake his head like, now nah, I'm good, man. <laughs> you ain't got to worry about me tonight, Clay. You know, EBA uh, Top 40, EBA All-American. Talked about our Elite Basketball Academy a little bit earlier. Camp Series has some of the best young men inside the state lines involved. And you know, it's a big night for Simons. You know, I watched Al Tariq Gilbert two weeks ago from Miller Grove. You know, I, I say that Simons, Jared Harper from Pebble Brook, along with Gilbert, are in the race for Mr. Georgia Basketball. Um, you see him right there, what a shot. I mean, didn't doesn't fall, but the confidence to just pull that immediately. And, and I think a dark horse, depending on the kind of year they have, could be a guy like Kevon Tucker. Mm -hmm. Just dropped 41 a second ago. So yeah. a lot of different elements in play tonight. I'm excited about it as we watch the instant replay. All right there, Simons rises in and fires and dropped that three ball in there. So checking into the ball game now, Xavier Bledson for the Red Elephants as we come up on almost three minutes gone by. And also in is Ferris Mance for the Gainesville Red Elephants. Now holding it is Anthony Scholl. Drew Smith holding it wide, picks it over to Scholl. That's Anthony Scholl, he pulls the three, no good. Rebound, hit the floor, picked up by Mance. Mance will clear it and outlet it, and here comes Xavier Bledson. Back to Bledson. Bledson holds on the right wing. Now they're going to take it, put it on the floor, and they'll kick it back out. Simons with a jab step. Simons going to drive, spinning in the lane, going up. 
No. Offensive rebound himself. Tip no good. Rebound is going to come back out. And here's Show. Well, Show over the transfer from Duluth. Has done a good job here early, staying in front of Simons. And then the nice pass. This is a big stage for him now as the dominant playmaking guard for St. Francis. No si Simmons, excuse me, shadow tonight. It's going to be all on Show to help create. Oh, great pass there on the interior. Nice. And a layup by Ferris Mintz. Set up with a great pass by Blitzen on the, the cut. That was a guard pass right there. That was smooth. He's got a good size to him, but a presence, and then the nice pass there. St. Francis come in at one and one on the season, and this is their first game away from home. Defeated Sacred Heart out of McAllen, Alabama, and then lost to Cedar Grove. Oh, in and out. They should have stopped it because it hit the wire. It didn't go in. Anderson doing work, has six early points. Good play there by Anderson. Anderson's a guy we project, you know, as a scholarship guy. Tough shot there by Simons. Off of the strong hand there with the pull-up. But Anderson's a guy who's going to be an unsigned guy, maybe even a possible prep school guy, not because of the academics, but for continuing to grow into his body and his frame. Mom was an All-American, even has been a coach at the Division I level. Carla McGee had the opportunity to speak with her before the game. So keep an eye on Anderson here in this game around the rim, helping to protect and rebound it for St. Francis. Kick it down in the corner and holding it on that right side. Now he's going to go on the baseline and show. Show up to the hoop, count it, and the foul, and one for Anthony Show, his first hoop. Show is one of those guys, and we talked about the stage being big for him tonight, but I think he's one of those guys that you know, hasn't gotten maybe the credits. You see the instant replay there and the finish. SUV TV TV, as always, Lisa Burnett on the production there with that timely replay. His ability to score it and make plays, even in the half court, is something he did even when he was at Duluth. He's been at multiple EBA camps doing the same thing, had the opportunity to speak with his father as well, just about the transition to St. Francis and giving his son opportunities like this to play in the night cap here in his senior year as he tries to make a decision in the spring. Three-point play is good by Shoal. And Gainesville now down 11 to 10. St. Francis has taken the lead, and there's an air ball three-pointer by Tay Turner, who just checked in. Now keep an eye on number 21, Bailey Miner there in the red as well for Gainesville. Like what he brings to the table. Size, skill package, good feet. Definitely have got to watch tonight for them. And here's a steal. Going to kick it up ahead. Stop. Peel it back. Going to put it on the floor. Now going to drive. Layup is going to be blocked out of there by Drew Smith. We talk about St. Francis not having Colby Simmons in the first two games. Averaging 29 and a half points per game. Anthony Scholl next at 16-5. And then from there, everybody's in single, fit, in single digits. So it will accentuate your point of a total team effort to come out on top of this ball game. No question. Somebody's going to have to step up and play a little bit bigger. You know, Scholl won't be able to get 16. And then everybody else has six and under for them to win it tonight. Somebody else is going to have to slide and sneak into double digits. And we talked about an Anderson maybe being a possibility there. But it will. It'll be a great game, I think, overall. Like I said, the dynamic is different. This is one of those headline Pacquiao Mayweather, assuming Pacquiao was healthy, right? You got it. So you hate that you don't have that, but you still got a bunch of guys that are going to play this game at the next level, and uh, should be a great one. Going to take it. Here they come on the break. Oh, no. He just, Michael White was unable to finish there. This Gainesville bunch, this is the season opener for them. It's High school basketball is what, officially a weekend now? Yeah, yeah, it's amazing. It feels like it's been for about three weeks already, yeah. man. This is game number 13 of this event, and you talked about how great it has been, 13 games of this event. Outstanding, there's a jumper, good. A three ball, and Messiah Dorsey that hit the three. So off of the football field and into the three-point book and the scorebook. Madias Messiah Dorsey, the quarterback that led that Gainesville squad, lost in overtime in the playoffs last week. Your vast knowledge of, of high school sports is fantastic, man. You and our guy, Vince Smith, y'all two know more about what is going on in the world of high school sports and college sports as well than I could ever hope to imagine. It's great. Look at Miner. Yeah, Look Miner. at Bailey Miner. Yeah, nice move by Bailey Miner. He was in control. I tell people high school sports, is, is, it is fun. There's no other way to put it. You're out here competing. You're going for college scholarships. 
you know, you had the cheerleaders, the girlfriends, and, and but once they get on the floor and on the field within those lines, they're just having fun, man. And, and then, like, like we like to say, elite level, that's what really makes you great. No question, man. When you see right now, Anderson with the rebound, you know, Miner taking the three from the wing. You're seeing some of these secondary guys that we talked about get into the flow in the mix of this game here early. Jacob Davis has checked in for St. Francis. Number one, Drew Smith pulls a three. It skips off the rim, no good. Chasing it down, it'll be out of bounds. 17 to 13. So a four point lead right now for St. Francis. Well, Benji Wood, I know we mentioned him for Gainesville, but also like what Drew Catlett, former college coach there at St. Francis, has done, stepped in, and obviously Malik Beasley and Kaiser Gates have moved on to the next level. Beasley off to a great start there for Florida State. You definitely a guy to keep an eye on as they get into league play here after the first of the year, but, you know, immediately revamps and reloads. You know, you have a show, show right here that comes in from Duluth to, to be a part of your program. Anderson, who's left from last year, in addition to Simmons. So puts it on the floor. On a drive with the left hand up and foul, and he'll go to the free throw line. Oh, Anthony Scholl with three points, and he'll be going to the free throw line. He's already one of one in 16 and 18 seconds remaining here in the first quarter. I love how animated Simons is, right? Yeah. Like, you know, there are some moments where the animation can get you in trouble. <laughs> but I really like how engaged and involved. One of the best games that I've ever seen at the high school level, regardless of location, whatever, was the game last year during Lanier Land in the championship with Gainesville locked in against Ty Cockfield, who's now a freshman at Stetson playing with Johnson. And uh, just incredible, the battle between Simons and, and Cockfield. Cockfield and Johnson ended up winning the game that night, but it was one of the best atmospheres. It was one of those, if you weren't there, you, you just don't know. And there were so many people in that gym, and all of them are from there in Hall County. And it's just special, the atmosphere and the environment. And I thought Simons was a champ in that. So you know, he's, he's battle-tested. Kick ball for him. St. Francis, and that's Will Richter, number 11. Eight and eight, 10 seconds, three-point ball game. Gainesville with the lead, looking for the inbound. Look for Simons. Richter took it away, so they expend it out to Buffing. KJ gets it down low, spinning with the left hand. Good by Bailey Miner. And that will be the end of the first quarter. So Gainesville with a five-point lead, 19 to 14, over St. Francis. Jared Cook Tip-Off Classic, powered by SUV TV. Sponsored by Marco's Pizza, authentic Italian pizza. Katie Customs, the official custom socks of the Jared Cook Classic. Motive Deals, motivated, digital, fundraising. And CoachHemi.com, the coach's source for X's and O's. Second quarter action underway between St. Francis and Gainesville here at the Jared Cook Classic. The nightcap and the finale, and there's a step back, a three. Good. Chance Anderson with a three. I love it. He hits the shot, immediately turns and mugs the bench like, yeah, man, we cool. We got this, man. No good on the offensive rebound and put back by Bledson. So here comes St. Francis coming back this way now. Show over to Anderson. He pulls another three. No good. Skipped off the rim. Offensive rebound was dropped in there. Jordan Ferguson was unable to corral it. 
And here they come. Here's come Simon. Simon's down. Swings good it to kick. the corner. There's a long three. Rolled off the rim. No good. Anderson now getting work on both ends. Well, you hear Benji Wood say, keep playing, keep playing. You know, I think on both occasions there, Anderson with the, the pocket three and the kick three there from Simons, those are good shots, man. Those are shots inside the rhythm of the game and shots that for these teams that they both can make. Nice job. Put it up with the left hand. It will be an offensive foul. Offensive foul on Xavier Bledsoe. That is his first and the team's fourth. So Mike White comes back into the contest and Bailey Miner will take a seat. A minute gone by. I'll get to see this Gainesville squad in region, hopefully, taking on a, a Cedar Shoals program. And Drico Thomas, I actually saw him in the building, so he's already okay. getting his early scout work in. <laughs> and he's got a young junior coming up. They call that foul on the floor in Philan Fleming. Uh, Cedar Shoals right now early in the top 10, but it should be a good matchup when you get into that region. That region eight is going to be very, very well. And Cedar Shoals, I know, had a pretty good summer. So just the intertwining of the, the, the high school basketball in Georgia is just wonderful. Demarcus Simon, slam! Don't go to work. Coach Wood, not worried about the, let's make sure, and this is what we talked about, yes. worrying about game 27 during game one in Gainesville's case, right? Yep. Hey, come on, let's be sharp. Let's go ahead and get this thing jumping. Tay Turner. I swear with it, D. In and now coming out will be Harry Oliver. So substitution. Coach Wood going deep into the bench, Masai Dorsey back into the contest. I uh, definitely want to shout out Adrian Penman, one of our lead trainers of our lead Nobody. basketball academy. Hall County native and Benji Wood and all these guys, man. The AP has been invaluable in terms of getting us locked in. East Hall with Joe Dix. Every game that will be on Gainesville's schedule. Yeah. That game, oh, man, it's like Georgia, Georgia. Up, packed up. And if you're not there by halftime of the girls' game, you're not getting in. The fire marshal is not going to let you in, man. Simon's three is no good. That's what I'm talking about. You know, quietly, Heritage Conyers. Uh, yes. A very good team, yes. ranked, you know, near the top of some teams there. And that that's a team that's in Gainesville region they're going to have mm -hmm. to contend with. Miner will come back into the contest. Gainesville in the red, rocking the Jordans, Team Jordan. <laughs> Here's Dorsey. Dorsey going to penetrate with the left hand and kick it off to the left. They're going to drive down the lane. Dump it off, Michael White, Got offensive charge. foul. Got a charge, yep, saw that one coming. Good defense there, being willing hey, to give it. up your body, man. Hey, give me a kill, Mike. Hey, what's up? Hey, you get one side, you get another. Hey, you get one side. Drew Smith will check back in. Ferguson will go out. Take it out. Hey, drop, take it. Drop. Go get it. Go, 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 Inbound is tipped away. Miner will come away with the steal. Miner with that left hand up. No, they tip for it. Out of bounds. Got on the back of the rail above the basket. Out of bounds. Benji Moore upset. Well, and it was interesting. You saw Miner go up, and it was like he saw that charge call again in his mind and kind of short arm, alligator arm that thing instead go, of finishing go, through go through the it. contact. Hey, you, go, hey, hey, you gotta go with it. And we're gonna have a 30 second timeout. We'll remind you of the ATL Peach Elite Series events. Of course, this is the conclusion of the Jarrett Cook. Okay. The Jarrett Cook Classic. And then you've got the On the Radar Hoop coming up. And that has Shiloh and Pebblebrook. And after taking a look there at the schedule, the Nike Hoop Showcase. Peach State Classic, Chick-fil-A Invitational, Lake City Classic, Crossover Classic, the Blue, Collar Basketball, MLK Showcase, and the Peach Tree Corners Invitation. Hey, stand it! Stand it! Out of the timeout, it is 21 to 17. Come on, come on, A little more than two and a half minutes gone by. And here's Avery Scholl, who's in there, gives it back over now to Anthony Scholl. Putting it on the floor, Drew Smith. 
Now he's going to drive all the way off the window. So no good. That's Avery Shoal on the drive and missed it off the window. That was a good move. Just not able to finish it, but you like the attack there to the rim. Oh, they will walk into the forecourt with the left hand dribble is Tate Turner. Turner now swings it over to the left. Stop, pulls a three, in and out. No good. Rebound coming off to St. Francis. Oh, knocked it out from behind. Chance Anderson tried to save it, but his foot was on the line. That was a good pick there from behind on Simons, man. An awareness, let Shoal go in front of him, but immediately just reached back around him, got the tip and the pick and the turnover. Like the size of his legs. Man, that joke was good in this first boy. <laughs> they may not look like they got Boeing in them, but they got plenty of Boeing in them. It don't matter. He fly, man. Them. Almost got them sticks, man, but that joke can get up and go get it, man. Man, what? Long three out of the corner. Is that mine or no? That's, that was that's mine, mine or yeah. yeah. I'm going to say this again. I told y'all when that dude went in there about middle of the first quarter, you got to watch for that guy. I had the unfortunate experience of coaching against him at camp. Mm -hmm. So I got to work with him in the morning. We were all good. Somehow the team that wound up on my bench didn't have Bailey Minor. <laughs> About 32 minutes later, I knew exactly what that young man could do, and that's what he had done all on my team for 32 minutes. Threes, post up, couple of booms. You talk about another young man with some bounce in his yep. legs. Miner's got that. So keep an eye on this guy throughout the course of the game. He's somebody that we project to be a, a big time scholarship guy as he continues to grow and develop just a sophomore. Michael White hit that three ball. A great kick there from Simons. And now you see him starting to make an impact. Now this is where you miss Kobe Simmons. Yeah. You know, these runs. Like you, it becomes waves, man. Yeah. So how long in the wave before you miss your, your star player, your score, and here's a wave right now? It is a 10-point lead for Gainesville, and Simons will be at the free throw line. He'll shoot two. It's good. The first one. Will Richter checking back in now. Yet to crack the scorebook. A chance Anderson three is the only field goal right now in this second quarter from St. Francis. Well, we talked about Shoal early, Anthony Shoal, that is. And you need him and Anderson desperately right now to come with a basket. Here's Michael White. Demarcus Simon saved it off the window. Uh -uh. Benji Wood is none too, none too happy about AJ that. A.J. Buffett, he's not, but boy, had he caught that thing, it would have been nice. Anderson, traveling violation. Simon tried to step in and take the charge, but Anderson didn't put that on the floor first. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. <laughs> you knew the minute that pass was not completed, he was going straight to the bench. And then the man that goes, Wood, sit down. Just sit down. <laughs> oh, man, that's a good way to spend the rest of the quarter over there, you know. And, and the moral little story here, just complete the play. Yeah. You know, if you're going to pass it to him, that's fine. Just put it in his hands and complete the play. Make this game easy for yourself. Bailey Minor, no. Kick it back out. There's a top side three. No good. Gainesville now trying to extend and push it out. Hey, go get it. It's not there yet. Hey, go get it. Come Harry on, Oliver. Steve. Trey Turner will be checking in. Now it's number 23, Dorsey. Simons comes up to the subs that come in and say, let's go. He's the only one that has not taken a breather. Trey Turner back in, along with Harry Oliver and Xavier Bledsoe. Simons is an interesting guy. Like, he reminds me of, you know, Will Smith in the episode of Fresh Prince where he carried his books in the pizza box. You know what I mean? Like, he's just one of those guys. Like, he's really bright. You know, you'll hear him engage in some conversation with uh, Coach Wood. You see the extra pass there to the corner. Like, he knows how to play this game, and he knows how the game should be played. And so I think it's some, there are some times where when he's engaged like this in big games, he's at his best. You know, where some guys shy away from the spotlight, 
Simons almost needs these games to stay engaged and impactful throughout it. Three ball is good. Jay. It sure was. Avery show on that one. Avery show with the jump. Hey, those you'll take those points. We talked about the need multiple guys to be able to score tonight. <laughs> Benji Wood is not playing games tonight. This is red alert, man. If you don't know and you're not ready and you have something to say back, you're gonna be on the bench. <laughs> Serious over there on that red oh, bench, it's, man. Benji Wood Ooh, is not playing, no game. playing games. Period. <laughs> that was an interesting exchange. I feel like I'm a player. You know how your dad is? Shut up. I'm talking. I'm speaking. <laughs> I'm not saying a word. <laughs> you know, I, we are within ear distance of him. Let me make sure I keep the broadcast <laughs> straight but I'll be on the bench over here. Well, look, and I, I think the great thing about that is it lets you know very early in Gainesville season, and we're yes. not 16 minutes into their season, what the expectation is. And the expectation is to be playing on that first week in March to be playing for a title. Yep. And if, if that's not what your expectation is, if your expectation is to throw the ball off the backboard for dunks and for highlights and you can't complete that, you're going to sit and we're going to find somebody who can. And so this is a great test. St. Francis obviously on the other side, but you can see right away what Gainesville is trying to do, where St. Francis, like they're there, right? Like they're coming off of that. That's just the expectation because of what we did last year. Gainesville, they're trying to set that expectation through their play, and Coach Wood is leading the way right now. Very much so. Ball tip goes out of bounds. Simons didn't agree with that. It'll come back this way, and St. Francis will have it with 89 seconds to go here in the first half. In a game that has pretty much gone Gainesville way, St. Francis an early lead, but since then it has been Gainesville most of this oh, half. Oh, nice cut. Yeah, Drew Smith got it. Block. Have some. Give me that right AJ back. Buffin. And it's amazing to see Buffin starting to fill out this frame. You're gonna see this here on the replay, queued up right away. Ball comes in. It looks like it's an open lay. Oh, oh, oh. No, 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 no. Give me that. While we were checking out that replay, Chance Anderson got the hoop for St. Francis. And Chance is quietly putting together a pretty good night. 13 by my count. I like Chance Anderson, man. He, he's come a long way. I remember sitting in the stands at City of Palms last year down there in Florida. And obviously with Beasley. Kaiser Gates and Kobe Simmons don't want a lot of extra shots to go around. But finding Anderson in crevices and gaps, and he was making his presence felt, even on a light night for him minute-wise, it was just one of those, okay, let me start this guy, let me come back to him in 12 months when Beasley and Gates are gone. I didn't know that Kobe Simmons would also be gone from this matchup, but that also works in Anderson's favor, even more touches. Yep. Free throw, no good by Simon. Hey, if he'd have made that, oop, this place was coming down. Yes, it was. <laughs> I, I was going to go. I, it may have came down. I would have rose up <laughs> out of my seat. The shot is up no good by Ferguson of St. Francis. Under a minute now in this first half, 33-26. Putting it on the floor, buffing cross-court pass to Simons. He wanted to pass it before he caught it. That's what that happened. He was looking for the play to develop and was unable to do it. Oh. Simons now will take a blow. It'll be his first blow of the game, and it comes in the last minute of the second quarter. So he'll get that plus the halftime. Show going to drive, get below the foul line, put it up off the window. No tip. Oh, oh he couldn't roll in. Rebound comes down to Harry Oliver. Oliver quickly into the forecourt. He got fouled, no call, and that goes out of bounds. And now we're going to have a push call. Avery Scholl and K.J. Buffett having an exchange in a little words there. Yeah. 
at the rate Benji Wood is going off. If I was a ref, I'd stay away as well right now. Swing it over to the left, put it on the floor. Going to drive. No. Out of bounds. Harry Oliver lost it. Out of bounds. 17 and 4, 10 seconds before the break. Going to take it in, going to spin all the way. Here comes Shaw, Avery Shaw. He was fouled from behind with 12 and 17 seconds. This is a good substitution here to get Simons back in for the last possession to give yourself a chance to score. That call here by Coach Wood. Free throw is good. Good shot there by Soul. He's giving them some good minutes tonight. Come this in, is Avery. Yeah, complimented Anthony very well. Been a, been a good night for him so far. Second free throw is good. Simon's in the ball game up to nine points. Driving down the lane, flip it up, beat the horn. Yes, sir. Tay Turner beating the horn, and it is a 35 to 28 halftime lead for the Gainesville Red Elephants. As you take a look here at the Jared Cook tip off classic replay, Turner got it at the top, drove to the left of the lane, took it on Anderson. shot feels effortless to me right when I release that shot it just feels serene and quiet it's only me in the rim and the basketball with my height to have an impact and to be the player that I wanted to be I needed to change my shot and that was going to be something that would be beneficial for the long term the process started just breaking my shot down from the initial release to the follow through. And there were days that I couldn't even get the ball to the rim. There were days that I couldn't go outside of the paint area. It was very frustrating to not be able to, to shoot the way that I wanted to. The hardest part of that process was definitely the patience. But if I just stuck to getting better every day, eventually I would be able to shoot where I wanted to anywhere on the floor. went through some tough days, but found a way to just persevere and see it through. It starts with a great base and great foundation and allows everything to feel perfect. can do all things.
We welcome you back for the second half. It is Gainesville taking on St. Francis. Demarcus Simons with the jump. It is no good. Simons had 10 in that first half. Well, I was impressed, honestly, with Simons, how he came out and played. You know, we talked about a, a potential letdown. And, you know, spoke to him just for a second there at the half. And obviously, you know, he was a, a little disappointed. You know, obviously, the matchup didn't materialize. But he didn't play like it, you know? Yeah. He came out and played. This is the first game of the year. He played like it's the first game of the year. You know, a little, little rust here and there. That turnover right there was a good example. But, uh, you know, more times than not, he was the DeMarcus Simons that we're accustomed to seeing play basketball. Nice move. Oh, a wedgie. <laughs> 13 games and we finally got a first wedgie. <laughs> as long as our season is on SUB TV and the ATO Peach Elite Series, this won't be the last. No, it won't be. Which is okay with me. Fine. As I tell you right now, the Peachtree Ridge Archer game. That's the one, huh? That, that, that's the one, man. I was I was in route, man. I was running some errands so I could be here with y'all tonight, man. I hate that I missed that one, but you know what? It, it's it's archive. Yeah, so I'll check it out. Yeah, oh yeah, it's not going anywhere. It's beautiful, man. It's just a beautiful finish. I've I've really liked and there's the jumper over there, of course, or like Demarcus Simons and, and Simon and, and, and Simon, Kobe Simons. Kobe Simmons is not playing. But I've been impre I'm impressed with Sequoia Sam Cox. He yes. could have easily had two 30-point yes. games and he made his free throws. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Jordan Usher played very well. I like what I saw, of course, from Al Durham today. A lot of the guys that you know and have seen, but as the fr as the season kicks off, it's good to see. We talked about in the last game, Collins Hill and their band, the game they got yeah. going on. They, they've got a nice little thing going on. So it, the event, as we talked about, and they just honored Jared Cook and his mother and father here, the event does what you're supposed to do. You may be able to see a good grasp of talent to open the season. Well, and, and all for a great cause. His parents, I can't say enough good things about them. They remind me, you know, just of my folks, man, just good people. And, and you know, with his brother Jason, his sister Winter, they've always wanted what's best for them. They were a huge part of the North Gwinnett community when I was coming through and just fantastic people. So I'm glad that this event continues to grow even at a time where the economy has hurt some of the events like this, some of the headline events, they found a way to keep this thing moving in the right direction as is Gainesville with that last jumper. Yeah, and, and then to add to the event, the auction of all the NFL gear that's been signed. I saw a little boy walk around with Ogletree football. I mean, come on. He's going to remember he was at a basketball event to get that. So it has been a very, very fine-tuned event. That is his talk. On a, on a cut. Drew Smith is back in. There's a long three. Show good. Avery show a three, and he has eight in the game. If he can play like this all season, just some timely baskets, even in a rotation standpoint right now. Avery Shoal 
been a great night so far for that young man. I talked about some of the coaches that have been in. Cedar Show's coach came back by the broadcast table, and he said, December 8th, that's when we play games. And you think the coaches don't take this thing serious. They know who they've gotten. And then he talked about, man, our region. Just our region alone, because it's Cedar Show, Gainesville, Heritage, Kanye, just that region, just that little brink right there. And he's in here scouting, the first game of the year. Well, and you know what's, what's great about that? They want those matchups too, right? Like you exactly. coach, you think about all the, the days, they're 365, 366 in the leap year. You only get to actually coach your team in games that count. Not even summer league, just games that count. Max 35, that's 10%. So you spend 90% of the season not coaching your team. You're going to love the 10% you do because you got to do a lot of work in those 90. As someone who coaches high school basketball for five seasons, you do a lot of work. There are a lot of phone calls with parents and college coaches and all kinds of other things, club coaches from the summer, all to be able to play these 30 to 35 games a year. Messiah Dorsey cracks that three, pushes the Gainesville lead to 10. Chance Anderson, by the way, had 15 in the first half. Will Richter, he had two, he missed that jumper there. So you talked about someone else having to step up with Showell, Anderson doing his part with 15. As he scores it again, he's been fantastic so far tonight. Really like Dorsey from Gainesville too. I think those are two guys, good defense there by Showell. Yes, nice drive, layup, good. Take Turner with the hoop. Turner, Dorsey, I mean they've gotten some good production to the point where Simons hadn't had to score 20 to make a play. Great press. We talked very early in the game about Benji Wood sitting on top of his team, wanting them to execute the press, and this is why. This gives them a chance to change the pace of the game and forces Drew Catlett and St. Francis into a timeout. You see the instant replay, the unselfishness, the two and finish, and the ensuing timeout. Great play, Gainesville's bench reacts. Another bucket there for the Red Elves. Forty-five to thirty-three. Twelve point lead as we come out of the timeout with three fifty-five to go. Doing my best Brandon Clay in, invitation. Well, I wasn't doing that. But you was doing. No, I, I gotta I, let them know, man. I had to. You got me thinking. I forgot that there was a, a girls' game that was high level. They stole it in the backcourt. Gives it off layup. Good, Michael White. But still, by Harry Oliver turning the defense and the offense, they pushed the lead to 14 now. McEachin girls will take. Oh my goodness! A blocking foul. On Buffing. Buffing. But the McEachin girls were taking on the Southwest the Cab girls tonight. Mm. On the other side of town, you got uh, East Jackson and Westlake on the boys' side. Yes. Drew Drennan, Jamie Lewis, plenty of talent out there. Oh, don't you love this time? Of year? I do, man. There's always a good game, man. It's no different than TV, man. Am I watching ESPN2, ESPN, Fox Sports? Fox Sports Regional, I got all the networks, man. Comcast, Sports, Net New York. I'd be watching random games. Sienna, yeah. Sienna and Manhattan. I'd just be watching crazy games, man. Three o'clock in the afternoon on the replay. I love yeah. it. <laughs> you can't get, can't get enough of it. It's make it fun for me now, especially to be a part of the, the Peach State basketball. I saw the upcoming, um, what was it? The top freshman. I was really pay. I really pay attention to the women's game, okay? Because they don't get enough love. So I really pay attention to them. And they was listing the top eight upcoming yeah, freshmen that. to impact that. And I'm ahead of myself. I'm sitting there looking for Jackie Rice and Aaron Bowles. Oh, a year, yeah. You're a year too soon. They, they're still in high school, man. They're still in high school. Uh-oh. Right. Hey. Corner of three, Harry Oliver. And the whole Gainesville student section he runs. They've yeah. been waiting. They have. They've been waiting. This is awesome. Lead is pushed out to 15. And you really have to think next year in the women's game, South Carolina is going to be absolutely deadly. They're going to be good. I mean, you lose, you lose Tiffany Mitchell. 
Okay, okay but you're but getting Kaylin Davidson and on the screen. Right. Right. You know, <laughs> UConn's still going to be good. You know, they, they'll be fine. Notre Dame, Jack Young, Aaron Bolier, y'all come on in. And that's another case, even with the Notre Dame deal. They're, they're not losing a dominant primary score, and they had two. So, so many good basketball players, so many good teams. Louisville will be a year older. Asia Girl will be a year older. Mm -hmm. They're going to add a great 16 class as well. You know, as you could tell, man, I just I love basketball, yeah, man. I love Junkie, it. man. Yeah, it, it, it's, it's wonderful. It'll be interesting to see how Nikki Caldwell turns that around mm -hmm. and at LSU. No question. Well, it's just lost Regine Moncrief for the season, unfortunately. Talented junior guard for them and, and maybe their primary score on the perimeter. So, you know, this is good stuff, man. I mean, whether it's Demarcus Simons with Gainesville, whether it's Ant Soul, Aaron Bowley, Jackie Young, Kelly Davis, they all been through the Peach State events, man. I love it. Beautiful. It, it's just wonderful. Good basketball. There's a foul in the backcourt. And we talked about it. This St. Francis team, you know, you, sometimes you hear this at the NBA level or, or really a lot at the collegiate level. Oh, they think just because we don't have our star, we can't play. Now, they're really, they hung tight in there. They were down seven at the half. Gainesville, though, has taken it up another notch. Well, and they're just playing. They're playing hard. It reminds me, of, we talked about East Jackson a minute ago. We yeah. saw them play Miller Grove live about two weeks ago. And East Jackson was able to give them two and a half quarters. And the Miller Grove depth took over. And it'll be interesting to see here in the next 220 if St. Francis can stay at the tie, can the Showells hit a couple jumpers, can Anderson knock down a shot here, or is Gainesville going to make this next 6-0 run that takes this thing to 20 and puts it out of reach? Yep. It is a 15-point ball game right now. Gainesville leading St. Francis. St. Francis in the white, Gainesville, the red elephants in the red. We are at North Gwinnett High School in Swanee, Georgia. Glad that you have been with us for this Jared Cook classic tip-off. Minor. Well, and you know it's it a away. big night, man. Did you see Simons in transition with a great pass ahead? Oh! Michael White blew the layup. Minor down there on the floor. Bodies on the floor. And a timeout call by Bailey Minor. We'll keep it right here. Go but ahead. You've got myself. You've got Kyle Moore. You've got Sean Williams in the building. All of those vote on the Naismith Trophy, All-American Teams Player of the Year. So if you didn't think that this was a big game going in and the matchup with Simons and Simmons, was going to draw national attention. You're wrong. Did you see the instant replay there? And games were really locking in. This was a game that was going to draw national attention. You see Coach Catlett imploring his St. Francis group, come on. I know we down one, man, but we got to find a way to get it done. And this is where you learn a lot about your team in moments like yeah. this. Both ways. Benji Woods learning a lot about his team right now, and so is St. Francis. That's the YMCA song. <laughs> hey, man, you can count on that once a night, man. <laughs> DJ Webb has done an outstanding job. Just like we said, an absolutely outstanding event. Passes up into the front court to Ferguson. Ferguson down to Anderson. Anderson with the jumper. It is good. Soul. Soul. Avery. Oh, great pass ahead. <laughs> and a foul down low. So we take... Anderson hit with the foul. Taking a look at Kobe Simmons on the bench. Uh, you, you hate it. And obviously, he was off to a great start there. You know, almost 30 a night. So, definitely could have used him. You know, and these are the matchups as a player that, that you live for, right? Yeah. You, know, you, you live for a chance to play against another guy that's in the top 100 and throwing up in front of three Naismith Trophy voters nationally. You could be in the player of the year discussion, and there aren't going to be very many games this year for him that he has that type of representation there. Mm -hmm. And obviously, school-wise, still open. You know, Georgia Tech was out the other night. Brian Greger was out to see Kobe Simmons play. So that's definitely not done, but he's got a nice group of schools. That's something completely different. Yeah. You know? Yeah. I don't care what people say. You grow up wanting to be NBA MVP. Naismith Trophy Player of the Year. I would hope so. First team All-American, right? In addition to wanting to win the rings and the state titles and things like that, as much work as you put in, the individual accolades, Mr. Georgia basketball. Great kick. 
And so DeMarcus Simons and you know Kobe Simmons both want those types of opportunities. Fortunately for Simons, he's able to be on the floor tonight. Simmons out with an ankle injury. And the thing is, you always hear the thing, good players or great players like playing with good players. They and like against. playing against them as oh, well. Oh, they're ready. Yeah. Like they, they know, and you see the instant replay right here of a great player making a great play there in Simons for the kick for the three. But, you know, sometimes it, it pans out. Sometimes it doesn't. We talked about Gainesville making this little run mm -hmm. to try to take this thing to 20 at 220. And we're at 110 now. And they're about to roll. Oh, they ran the impulse play there for Simons. You saw how heady he was hey, to hit it with knew. his left hand, get it back, and put it in to Marcus Simons. Yeah, he, he, he knew he wasn't going to complete the play, but saved it so they could complete the play. And then he completes the play. Exactly. Under a minute, breaking the pressure is Drew Smith. Smith now going to kick it and put it on the floor. Simons got a deflection in there. Ball went into the third row. Substitution now. Ross Tippin will come in for the very first time for Gainesville. Inside Dorsey comes out. Along with Bailey Minor. Hey, come up. Brent Kelly is who hit that three out of that left corner. Yeah, I like Brent Kelly a lot. The youngster, 2019, but somebody to keep an eye on. He was at EBA top 40 camp and EBA All-American camp as well. Really like what he brings to the table. So between him. Bailey Minor, K.J. Buffin, plenty of good young talent here at Gainesville, even after Marcus Simons graduates next year. Austin Lang makes his first appearance, so Coach Moore going deep into the bench right now. Simons will be walking to the bench. Into the forecourt now is Tay Turner. Turner gives it over to Kelly. Kelly goes down low. Nice pass. The tipping, tipping off the bench and into the scorebook. I told you, I like Brent Kelly, man. And that's the coolest thing I think about the EBA series now. You know, going through this first full cycle with the boys back integrated into the girls' events as well. Is being able to get a glimpse at these guys a Bailey Minor, a Demarcus Simons, a Brent Kelly show will even into that camp setting where we're teaching, we're going through drills, we're playing games, and I'm physically on the floor with my Knights laced up coaching them. It's been a lot of fun, and it helps with the broadcast identifying who's who out here. Shoal fouled as he went to the hoop. Anthony Shoal, still quiet, has not scored here in his third quarter. Avery Shoal has stepped up with six. Nine and five, ten seconds, inbound. There's Avery Shoal, gets it in, putting his back on the floor, and that's going up is Carson White. White Good play. with the hoop. And we have reached the end of the third quarter. 59 to 41, Gainesville leading St. Francis. We'll come back for the fourth and final quarter from the Jared Cook Classic on SUV TV. minutes back on the clock and we inbound it with St. Francis moving left to right and they are in the white, Gainesville in the red. And the final quarter of the Jarrett Cook tip-off classic for 2015 from North Gwinnett High School in Swanee, Georgia. Gainesville with a 59 to 41 lead. Here's a jump by Avery, back iron, no good. Hit the floor, Avery gonna pick it up and now lose it out of bounds. And it will go over to Gainesville, Simons hey, still in the ball game. Simons, White, hey, Buffin, and Minor 
along with Harry Oliver on the floor. And this is the starting group here to start this fourth quarter. First game of the season, want to get in the habit of finishing. Agree. We're just get, getting reps too, man. Yeah. But just giving those guys reps. Like you said, I mean, they're two weeks out from player Cedar Shoals who's gunning for them. So it's not like you can let those guys play for the first half and then just sit them. Like, you've got to get these guys some reps together. And so many people playing different pieces. Minor didn't play nearly this role for this team as he did last year. Good defense from Avery Scholl forcing a five-second turnover. Well, Thomas has got to feel that. Set the high screen and roll with Minor. Didn't have anything downhill, which is perfectly fine. You've either got to feed Minor or you've got to reverse the basketball and keep playing. Mm -hmm. You can't sit and dance with it left, right, and not create any space. They're going to get you with that every time. Here's a three out of the corner. Good. Good he shot. rattled it home. Jordan Ferguson, that's his first field goal. Well, you see St. Francis trying to make a push here. Oh, oh, they measuring each other. Yes, they were. They measured each other. And went in and took the contact. And, and you talk about big names and everything. You see him, you want to go score on Oh, no him. question. That's just how that is. <laughs> no question. So, Shoal at the line. Shoal with 11 in the game. And it's his first free throw here in this quarter. He is 4-4 four, four from the line tonight. Missed the second free throw. I missed what the ref said. Ten is doing something. Ten red. <laughs> he said something to the coach. I don't know what he said. He said ten red was doing something. I missed it. You must have caught it. Did you? I, I didn't catch it, oh. but I, I'm sure. <laughs> knowing DeMarcus Simons the way I do, he was just being DeMarcus. No big deal. Oh, man. yeah. <laughs> no alarm here, man. Putting it on the floor, drive, white kick over to Turner, Turner a three. Good Good shot. Shot. I like the spacing and the ball movement. Hey, Turner with a three ball. Well, Turner's giving them some good, good minutes here. I, I really like that guy. Athletic, strong, compact, and a guy that can make an open shot. You know, we talked about the Kula athletes with skill. Great pass. Oh, hey, needed that one to convert. That was tough. Little yeah. dribble, dribble weave, dribble weave. White hit with the foul. Free throw good on Anderson. That reminds me of Jalen Rose. The ball has energy when you pass it. And that's exactly what Coach, <laughs> Coach Wood has just stressed with talking with his assistants. Right but on it, cue. And one. Oh, almost got it. That would have been Bailey Miner going, Miner going to it. And, and that's really the case. The ball does have energy. Because you, who wants to be up and down the floor and not touch the ball? It's Paul basketball. Not me, man. I, I was trying. And really, I just wanted to pass it. I didn't even really shoot it. But I, I did want the ball in my hands so I could rack that assist up. Yeah, you want to feel it. <laughs> it's one of the young lessons that, you know, you know, I cover the Bulls. So Bobby Portis was giving the example of when he was young, he almost wanted to give up playing basketball. And his mother was like, why? He's like, because I don't get the ball. She says, go get it. <laughs> go get it off the rebound. And, and a lot of people forget that's how you get the ball. Nothing has been the same since for Bobby Portis, man. <laughs> Crazy eyes. Nothing has been the same since. Learning to adjust now, not getting off of the bench much, but still in a good situation. No question, And man. had a pretty good preseason as well. Uh, Tyus Jones going through the same thing in Minnesota, man. It's Ooh, tough. Good shot. shot. That Minnesota team is going to be special in a couple of years. I, I Everybody agree. young, I agree. when it's time to extend their contract, Kevin is still there doing his, he, I call him Uncle Kevin now, because you know how your uncle used to show up at the gym and still show y'all he could play? So I'm going to show up and play my 12 to 15 minutes, I'm going to give you eight points, 10 rebounds, two steals, then I'm going to go sit down. <laughs> <laughs> that's what. That's how I look at KG that's now. Awesome, Uncle man. KG, right? Turn now. it, turn it into that player coach, man. He was in street clothes the other night. Had the and opportunity to go see him. And just see the instant replay there with the fall down, man. Just to let y'all know, I'm nice. 
he was in street clothes and you just saw him coaching. And every time out, Andre Miller, who is still in uniform, he and mm -hmm. Kevin Garnett are literally co-assistant player coaching the team right now. Yes. It's, it's pretty cool. Yes, because he's going to go from player coaching it to owning. Man, <laughs> facts. That last Max deal he signed, yeah, he's going to be okay, man. In and out. A rebound comes down. It, this happens, folks. Glad that you're with us, Joel Hills and Brandon Clay. If you know this, yes, we have a fine basketball game in front of us, but oh, we'll nice. go from the NBA to men to the women to college. And then back to the game. That's exactly. a big time three out of the corner there for Richter. Will Richter with that three ball. Shot is no good. Chance Anderson will get the rebound with 4.44 to go in a 16-point ball game. So one more push could be needed from St. Francis. There's a jump. Good. Ferguson stuck it in. And a timeout. And you could feel that from Coach Benji Moore. He doesn't see it. Like you said, this is one of them situations where he wants to instill. And we talked about it last night with Hemi. Habits. Want to instill these good habits early on in the season. Well, and both ways, right? Like, you know, Coach Catlett has done a great mm -hmm. job you know, in the face of a tough opponent and, and not having your guys just see the instant replay there and then the dat down, man, that makes it official. Not having your primary score. And, and you know, obviously there was no memo sent out that Kobe wasn't playing, so it's not like they've known this for 72 hours, 96 hours, mm -hmm. right? All of a sudden you got to change the way you play entirely because you've got a guy that's one of the 100 best in the country and he's not playing. So you I think they literally out, right? found out when we did. Everybody was sitting here, and when St. Francis came on the floor to warm up, everybody, where's oh, Kobe? Oh, he's not playing tonight. And I so, looked up, I'm like, wait, where, where is it? And, and all that being said, they've done a great job of, of coming out here tonight and competing. You yeah. know, and so if you're Coach Catlin now instilling habits, hey, we can compete even when our top score isn't available to us on a night, and we got to remember that. And at the end of the day, I've never known anyone to win one on five. No, no question. So, no question. Got to have some help. We, we harp on that, and he's out. You know, we like seeing good players, but at the same time, it's still a team concept. He's going to have to do his part to help his team. The team going to have to do his part to help him. It still goes hand in hand. Well, it's been a big night for Chance Anderson in that regard. Yes. I thought Avery show him. Anthony did a good job early, and Avery's done a good job here toward the latter part of this game. You know, those are a couple of names to come away with out of this one tonight for St. Francis as they continue to move on in the year. Masai Dorsey running it with Trey Turner. Turner going to drive and now kick it back over. Here's Turner. Turner kicks it down. Here's the sort. Dorsey going to go baseline, kick it out to the top. There's a long three by Harry Oliver. No good. Rebound pulled down by Avery Scholl of St. Francis. Coming up on three and a half to go in the fourth quarter, 66 to 52. Gainesville in full control, and Gainesville now trying to hold off St. Francis, kick it back. They'll pull it back and be easy with it. And a foul on Scholl. That's Anthony Scholl, who we thought was going to come out and play very well. Very quiet, four points in the contest. And there will be a full timeout call on St. Francis, by St. Francis, with 3.20 to go. Quick break right here, SUV TV. Perfect shot feels effortless to me. Right when I release that shot, it just feels serene and quiet. It's only me and the rim and the basketball. With my height to have an impact and to be the player that I wanted to be, I needed to change my shot and that was gonna be something that would be beneficial for the long term. The process started just breaking my shot down from the initial release to the follow through. And there were days that I couldn't even get the ball to the rim. There were days that I couldn't go outside of the paint area. It was very frustrating to not be able to, to shoot the way that I wanted to. The hardest part of that process was definitely the patience. But if I just. Back inside of North Gwinnett Gymnasium in the final three minutes, 
And plus change here. Gainesville in control. St. Francis tried to make a push. There goes Miner down the lane, and it will be a traveling violation. You know, Brandon, you made a statement about the Gainesville uh, student section. They've actually relatively behaved tonight. <laughs> well, then you you know they they were obviously excited yeah you know for the for the matchup and it, and gainesville to their credit had that run there at the end of the third that got them engaged as they kind of pulled it away but you know i thought demarcus simon summed it up best at halftime he said hey man like you know we know what everybody came to see and unfortunately we're not getting it it doesn't feel the same you know that was his quote coming out of the locker room at the half and you know he, he's right you know in that regard once in theory they made that run. Now, St. Francis, from a game perspective, is still staying in this thing now, and they're a stop or two away from getting back. But it's not the same atmosphere. Mm -hmm. The kids feel that playing the game. The student section feels that. They came ready to go at Kobe Simmons, right? Yeah. Like, you know, so there's some give and take there. The stands have cleared and empty. You know, it's, it's not the same buzz. It, at about 8.25 tonight, there were people lined yes, up standing really all good. over that wall. And even though this is a close game, it's just not the same atmosphere. And I think to not acknowledge that is kidding yourself and kidding everybody that's tuned in and watching this. Dorsey with the hoop. And just to let you know, this is a 5A school going up against a 1A school. So it's not like they, they've got a chance to meet in the playoffs or anything like that, which is why you love these type of settings and events. No question. So that, that kind of... The air is out of the balloon just a little bit, just to be quite honest with you. Oh, yeah, no, no doubt. Well, and again, I, I think personnel-wise, the people that we identified early in the game yeah. that were suited up and ready to play have all stepped up, whether it's a, a Chance Anderson. You know, we talked about, obviously, you know, the, the relationship with his, you know, his mom and the skill set there and some of the things that he possesses, and he's been great. The shows have been great. But it reminds me of the Lakers the first year Kobe was out. Mm. Good example. When Kobe couldn't play, like, that was that. That was it was just a wrap. You can't replace those types of players. That's why they're special in the first place, because they don't walk oh, around on every corner. You can't just go find you one for the game and suit up. So anytime you have to play without that and the matchup has been set and you know, it's a headliner of the show. As you see the instant replay here and the finish there, Joel. And Joel gets the steal and lays it in, and that's his first field goal since back in the first quarter. Anthony Scholl now with six in the contest, 146 to go. It is 68 to 56. Taking a look at that St. Francis bench right there during the timeout. Scholl with his head down. And there's Kobe Simmons standing right there. When well, you see still locked in, you know, Coach Catlin and his group trying to find a way, like I said a minute ago, they were a stop or two max away from being right back in this game. And you look at it, I mean, if they can get this thing to eight here in the next 20 seconds yeah. or so, now it's anybody's ball game. You probably see DeMarcus Simons go back in. He was getting ready to take those future Jordans off he got. He was ready to chill. If somehow they're able to get two more buckets in the next 20 seconds, the entire landscape of this game changes and everybody's walked out of the door already. They're going to miss something if we can get a couple of buckets here and a couple stops from St. Francis. It has been a modest night for Mr. Simons, 14 points, 10 in the first half. And the one thing that you'll notice about games, but we continue to talk about team efforts, there's a nice layup off the window. No, Miner still fighting for it. Drew Smith going to come away with it. 10 players have scored for Gainesville tonight. Yeah. yeah. Well, and they just do a great job. You know, I, I say Joe Dix from East Hall does a, the same thing in terms of being able to play multiple players and run them in waves, and it makes it so hard on a night like tonight for St. Francis to be able to keep pace all night long as good as they are, as good a job as Coach Catlett's done, and for as the production they've gotten. It's still tough at some point. You just run out of bodies, man. Yeah, you do. You just run out of bodies. Nice outlet pass. Coming break on the break, layup good. He came off the bench, and that's Austin Lang in the scorers that's column. That's number now. 11. Yes, sir. That's number 11. He like. came in late in the third. Now he's in here in the fourth and got him a run out layup to push it all the way out to 14. That was Down a the good lane, finish, wasn't it? Yes, oh, it good was. Dave. Speaking of good finishes, Avery Shore right back at you. Been a good night for that young fella. You always look at those guys that get in at the end of the game and you get a layup like that. You're hoping your eyes ain't too wide, like you're so open, you're so happy. <laughs> and he caught it, corralled it, put that thing down on the floor and then easy off the window with the left hand. Drew Smith, long three is off. Final 24 seconds where we, 
are glad that you have been with us for the 13 game event here at the Jarrett Cook Tip Off Classic. I'd like to thank again the host, North Gwinnett, Matt Garner, and the staff, and all of the North Gwinnett administration and staff that have been outstanding, wonderful hosts here at this event. On the radar, hoops is coming up next. And remember, if you missed anything, it's on SUV TV, the SUV TV. Dot com. Good win for Gainesville. Great way to open the season. You know, I thought Coach Kaplan learned a lot about his St. Francis team as well. And Benji Wood laid the gauntlet down tonight, folks, and, and his team responded uh, in a resounding fashion, man. Impressive start to the season. And uh, I think for Coach Kaplan, impressive start to their season to play without Kobe Simmons that can beat the way they did tonight and not let Gainesville run away with this one. So a lot to learn for both teams. Uh, thankful for the Jared Cook Classic, Matt Garner. They did a great job and set the stage the best they could, man. It was awesome. It was an outstanding event. Got to see a lot of good basketball over 13 games. Some outstanding players and some guys that may not have the name hype, but at the end of the day, you can continue to get better because it is November. And your goal is to be playing, as you say, the first weekend. Period. In March. Period. In the state of Georgia, anyway. And Lee, the only out-of-state team that came over, they had a tough draw in Green Forest. Um, Green Forest, actually respectable. You may wind up seeing could be St. Francis Green Forest. They're really good. Somewhere down the if you haven't seen Green Forest, go watch the archive. They are absolutely fantastic. Good guard play, even better play on the interior. They're really good. He's Brandon Clay. I'm Joel Hills. I want to thank Lisa Burnett, Marcus Burnett, our production crew here with SUV TV. Final score, Gainesville has defeated St. Francis 70-58. to and the 2015 Jared Cook Tip-Off Classic is in the books. We'll see you down the road right here on the SUVTV.com.